Hey, welcome back to the channel where we explore all kinds of creative uses of AI. And today I'm taking us back to Prome AI. This is one of my favorite AI sites of all time in terms of a place that's integrated a lot of AI image and video tools together. Now I know I say this every time I do a video about Prome that it's my favorite and I spend more time there than ever, but I gotta tell you, it is a integral part of my workflow. I use it to generate images for other workflows where I just need an image real quick or something of a certain style. It is so quick to get a great image here. Plus they've got all these other tools and what I also love about them is just about every time I go there, they've added something new. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. They've added a couple of new features. Today I'm gonna to focus on AI headshots, but along the way I will show you a few other things they snuck in that are awesome tools that make this even better. Okay, AI headshot generator is a way for you to create consistent images based on a headshot. One single image with no training of a model necessary. We started with this picture here, got this picture with daily snow city, digital art, watercolor. What does all that mean? Well, let's go find out. Let's use the platform to generate an image of our own to work with, and I'll show you some of the nuances of this and what to do to get the best overall image, given some of the limitations of this particular technique. Okay, let's type a familiar face so we can see the quality of this stuff when we put this character in different scenarios. Let's just choose Albert Einstein. Okay, and assuming we know nothing about prompting, here's where we can really define what's going on in this image. First of all, we can choose a style. So when we click on style, you can see we have lots of different categories up here and within each category, you have subcategories with just hundreds of different styles to choose from. Let's just go ahead and choose photography right now. I'll choose natural. You can also choose the scene. Architecture, oh, I want them at a villa. I want them in a residential building. Environment. You can see commercial spaces, interior design. You can also click on character design. Are you making a girl? Are you doing a boy? You can also do character type and style. If you have no idea how to prompt anything whatsoever, you're not necessarily going after a particular character like Albert Einstein. You can come in here, type nothing in the prompt bar and build everything right here by just choosing styles and scenes and different views. Views are the camera angle. And one of the things you need to know about choosing one here is that as you click styles, they get added to it. If you only want one of these styles, you have to click off the one you chose before. For example, if you want a long shot, and you don't want to click medium shot to and then extreme close up. It will try and do a blend of those, which is fine. It doesn't destroy the image or anything. But if you really want control over the shot and the angle, just choose one. And even then sometimes it's hit or miss, but you stand a better chance. In this case with Albert Einstein, I'm going to do a medium close up shot. I'm not actually going to choose a scene because we really just want his face. And then we'll deal with the scenes and putting him in other places later. So let's just click generate. Okay, that's a pretty close-up shot, but it's a good one. Let's go ahead and send this over to the headshot generator by just hovering over edit and clicking AI headshot generator. That's going to throw it right on in here where you can describe your desired scene or make a selection below. Just like when we generated the image, we can choose a style or a scene right here, or we can type the scene we'd like them to be in. Let's just do that. Let's say in a fur parka in the snow. Okay, now let's do a comparison here. Side by side with the slider, you can see that it changed the original image pretty significantly. And that's kind of the nature of this particular technology that is doing this face change. It's not gonna be an exact face swap, it's gonna approximate it. Sometimes it's gonna be better than others, sometimes it's just gonna be bad. Let's do something that looks pretty bad. This tool does a lot better when you do close-up shots. Let's see if we can create a wide shot and we'll see what happens with the face and then what we can do about it. Let's go back to the image generator and we're going to say wide angle shot of Albert Einstein skiing. We're just going to do something weird like that and I'm not going to mess with this at all. Okay, great. That's perfect. All right, now let's take this over to a headshot generator and see what we can do. Now we have a whole image, not just a head, and we want to change, I guess, a lot. Maybe we don't want him skiing at all. We want him rock climbing in the Alps. Let's just see what happens if I type rock climbing in the Alps. Now let's take a look at the style and let's make some choices here. I want to keep it, I think natural is good for what we said, but let's go ahead and choose something else anyway. Let's choose analog here and for the scene, do we have anything that's kind of outside that's like the 
Alps, nothing really. Maybe hike? All right, let's do hike. Let's just see what happens if we combine the prompt with the styles. Okay, well, here he is. He's hiking in the Alps. And if we take a look at the image, we definitely lose some of the detail in the face, right? Like here's the original. You can see just right here that there's more detail, but here we kind of lose it. As we zoom in, it's just not there anymore. That tends to happen when the original image is further away. It just doesn't capture the essence of the person. Let's take a look at this one here. When we go side by side here, you can see that the face there looks nothing. Looks nothing like the face here. There's a lot that's changed. It approximates the size of the image. The pose isn't the same. Not necessarily supposed to be either, but because it's got less information on there, it just doesn't have an accurate view of the face. It does much better when you start with a close-up shot, but even then it's not 100% accurate. And it seems to work better with some faces than others. So for example, on this one here, here's my original headshot and here's the change. See, you can tell there's absolutely no change here. It looks exactly the same on both sides. What can we do if we want a better shot of Einstein's face, but we want him freaking hiking in the Alps? Well, that's where the magic of the outpainting feature of Prome comes in. Let's take this one right here. This is a great one. Let's hover over edit and let's click on outpainting. Now we're going to change the aspect ratio of this image. And now we can actually change the size of this right here and move it wherever we want. Now let's type it here. Wearing a fur parka hiking in the Alps. And click generate. Okay, there you go. I think it did a pretty good job. We go back and forth. You see the before and the after. And of course, it retained the quality of the face. We can keep building on this, by the way. Let's send this to outpainting again. Car broken down on the side of the road in a snow storm. Generate. While that's working, you can see that that's also what I did over here. We had this original picture of Tracy and then I expanded it with a prompt to include a prompt by the ducks. And before that, it was this picture here, which started with this picture here, which I expanded to this. You can keep building and building and building your scenes. Okay, that is awesome. That's awesome. That's some fun out painting right there. If we look, this image is already 2887 by 1924. That's a pretty big image. What happens if we try to out paint again? We're gonna go out paint. It says the image pixel size is too large. And it says you can choose to continue and the image will be auto resize. Let's just resize it. It'll make it appropriate. What I wanna do is change the aspect ratio again to nine by 16. I'm going to bring this up. I can even just take it out of the picture. Let's see, wearing a Fur, parka, and biker shorts, white socks, and sandals generate. Okay, awesome. Okay, this is fun. I don't really like how I did this line here. I could have, I guess, taken that up to the top of the image and then it would have done okay. This is nice. Still got nice detail. We're starting to lose it though, as you can see. We're losing the detail. Let's do one more thing before we try to regain some of this detail in the HD upscaler. Let's try and add something to the image using the Erase and Replace tool, which is kind of like an in-painting tool. I'm going to hover over Edit. I'm going to click on Erase and Replace. It's going to do some image analysis. And what it does here is it breaks things up into segments. If I wanted to replace this parka or change the color of it, I could do that by clicking this and saying Red Sweater. Make sure Replace is chosen and click on Generate. Okay, it replaced it with a green sweater. Hey man, it's not perfect technology, but you get the idea. I mean, it's still fur line park, but let's go side by side. But you can see it did change it from a regular jacket with a jacket material to a sweater. So you get the idea, but that's not actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to add something in that wasn't from a segmented part of the image. And for that, I can just click this paintbrush here, manual selection, and I can paint where I want something in the road or in the image in general, in this case, a road. I'm going to write skunk and I'm going to click generate. Okay, well, that is a bizarre looking skunk, but it did the job. It's a little messy. You can kind of see too much of the, where I scribbled the end painting, but still you get the effect. But now let's look again at, at his face and we'll see we lost some of that detail when we did that last round of out painting. And this is kind of a little wonky around the skunk. So let's see what happens if we send this image to HD upscaling. Hover over edit. We're going to click HD Upscaler. 
we're going to use the natural template so it doesn't change it into some sort of cartoon style. And for creative options, we're going to go right in the middle because high sometimes changes the face way too much. And let's click on generate. And it may actually be that medium changes the face too much too, in which case we'll just go low. We'll still hopefully get some of that detail back. Let's look at what happens. Okay, now that looks good. I can't unfortunately scroll up to get to the top of this space, but you can see it's sharp. It might actually be too sharp in some places. Now that I'm looking at it with a more critical eye, I was looking first at the face and I see the face looks good. It's still sharp. We definitely keep detail in the jacket. All of that's good, but it actually seemed to maybe accentuate the oddness. The, the fur of the skunk looks much better, but maybe if we just pretend like that's a puddle of water, then uh, we can make this work. But I still want to try it on the low setting for creativity for the HD upscale and see if it looks any different. We're going to change the creative options to low and run it again. Just even without zooming in, you can see that from here they look basically the same. It didn't really solve any problem with that puddle looking thing. If we zoom in here, it still seems to have sharpened up some of the noise on the car a little bit more than we want, but also in general, it does make the face look better than it did before. This is an instance where you may want to take this image here and the original image and combine them in Photoshop or something like that. You can get the blurred image of the background and then just the sharpness of the face. Those were just a couple of quick examples. We just kind of scratched the surface on the tool, but I wanted to give you the basic idea. You can see what other people have been doing in really creative ways by checking out the site itself over at Prome, seeing the original image, looking at the prompt and see what they did and try it out for yourself. Do it with people you know or whose faces you're familiar with. You can see what impacts whether or not the face looks like the person or not. Generally speaking, if the face is a close-up face and then you outpaint from there, you're gonna get a better result than if you try to do a long shot face that's replaced. It just doesn't maintain the level of detail you need to really recognize the face as the person it's supposed to be. I wanna make clear again that most of my AI artwork and animation work and video work is done in comfy UI. I'm using my own system, I'm using my own servers. I generally don't go outside and use subscription services except to just test them out every now and then for something. This site is a huge difference. I use this constantly to generate source images for some of my comfy UI projects because there's many images that in comfy UI I'm doing something to an existing image and I don't need to take the time to generate that original image in the first place in a particular style. That's a whole other bundle of workflow and nodes that I don't need. I just need the image real quick like not even using my CPU. I always have Prome running in the background and if I need a quick image in a particular style, for example right now I'm working on a big project around caricatures. This spits out great caricature images just by choosing the caricature style and typing a very simple prompt. Then I can take that into Comfy UI and use that as a basis using IP adapters and and control nets to do all kinds of stuff with that image without having to worry about loading some model that gets me the caricature style. It's all right there in Prome. And then I'm also bringing things back into the HD upscaler a lot. And if I get an image that seems to scream animate me, I'll bring it in here to the image to video tool. If you have not yet checked this out because you think you don't need an all-in-one AI site, please go check this out and play with these tools and see what you think. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will...